Welcome back to the Kodak Invitational. This is Zena McLaughlin, 13-year-old out of Melbourne. You remember, this was the flexible one on the balance beam. She's going to open up her tumbling with two whip backs through to a double tuck. There they go. One, two, and she anticipates the landing a little. Tried to stick it. She's a spunky little performer, and the floor exercise is a great event, again, to express your personality through your gymnastics and through your dance. And what we're looking for is explosive and powerful tumbling skills and pretty graceful dance. Here's her second tumbling cast. Two and a half twists. A nice job. She's really good at twisting in the air. a chance to highlight your individual skills through your dance. Creative choreography and music selection are paramount on this event. <laughs> she earned a 9.3 on beam, so let's see what she'll, if she'll be able to top that here. And her last tumbling pass, three front handsprings into a front layup. And a solid performance, I think, for Zena. Good job, Zena. By the way, the score for Shannon Miller over on bars was a 9.8. That was in the last segment before commercial, and that was kind of a generous score. I think it was, because she had a pretty significant break on her dismount. This is a look at her last tumbling run. Again, front tumbling. Three front handsprings in a row into an immediate front layout. Front tumbling is very popular this year, and over the past two years since the 92 Olympics, when the new code came out. Code of points is like the gymnastics bible. 9.5, the official mark for Zena McLaughlin. She doesn't seem as pleased as perhaps she might be. I thought that was a pretty good routine. Now we move over to the balance beam, and this is Maria Taylor representing the host club, the Atlanta School of Gymnastics. Maria is a 15-year-old. Round of layout, step out onto the beam. Maria is one of two elite gymnasts at the Atlanta School of Gymnastics. And here's her flight series, two layouts. Again, her hips came out of line and her body fell off. That's the way it goes. You have to be so focused in keeping your center of gravity directly over that four inch balance beam. Again, the Atlanta School of Gymnastics has been running this event for 21 years. I spoke to Tom Cook and he says he has a great booster club. They, they really run the whole thing. The parents uh, club helps a lot. I would bet the excitement here in Atlanta with the Olympics just a year away would make uh, a participation in Olympic sports just that much more fun. And the reason why this event was started years ago was to bring high-level gymnastics to the state of Georgia and to the area of Atlanta to really raise awareness. And I think they've, they've done that. They've accomplished that over the years. Maria Taylor on your screen. Placed third in the all-around at the 1994 Level 10 Nationals. Second place on this event, the balance beam. As you would imagine, too, John, this event next year, since it is an annual event, could be a great preview for the 96 Olympic Games, which will be right here in Atlanta. Here's her dismount, a double full. Okay, back on the floor now. We're looking at Claire Cribs. We saw her earlier. She's one of the kangaroos. Oh, tough landing. Didn't quite make it around on that double back. Again, the Australian gymnasts we're seeing have some Soviet influence, and it's really noticeable in their dance and expression, amplitude, execution, all of these things that the Soviets have become famous for over the years in the international scene of gymnastics. And here's a front tumbling pass. That's a Rudy. She had to put her hand down. She's having some difficulties during this exercise. Now, internationally, isn't the floor uh, a blue color, or does the color really not make any whole significance? It doesn't really make a difference. It is typically blue, but in this case, it's, it isn't. It's not a different, a different material, though. No, it's a different uh, brand of floor exercise, though. That's why. Now, she's really going to need the stamina here to get through her last tumbling pass, because she had some trouble on the first two. Ending with a double full to a good landing. She seems to come out of that well. Okay, let's, uh, while we wait for that score, we join the beam. Anderson is on the beam, and her routine is in, just got underway. By the way, her teammate, Maria Taylor, on the beam in the last uh, round, just scored a 9.05.
Brooke is 16 years old, a junior in high school here in town. This is probably a fun meet for them because all their their friends and family can come and join them. And that was a flight series, but if you notice, she only had two elements in it, so she doesn't have the main major difficulty that some of the other gymnasts have. She is an elite gymnast from the state of Georgia. Punch front onto the beam. And then off, unfortunately. Again, the reason why you're seeing falls on this move, this is like the third one we've seen on the front, um, a front, is because it's completely blind, and you don't know that the beam is there until your feet hit it. So you really have to have tremendous awareness in the air, and then again, factor in the fact that this is four inches wide. The fact that their club is hosting this event, does that add pressure to the athletes? I'm sorry, John? The fact that the uh, Atlanta school is hosting this overall event, does this add pressure to the athletes? Do you want to do well in front of the home crowd? I think it does. Of course they want to do well. All their friends and family members are here. And it's really, they're representing this, this meet and the Atlanta School of Gymnastics, and I think they do. A triple full, a huge dismount. Very difficult dismount. So she jumps off the beam. We'll be back with her score. Claire Cribbs on floor earned an 8.30. Join us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Kodak Invitational. Two rotations are completed during the break. We're going to have the opportunity to enjoy Amanda Borden's performance on the floor exercise. She's a member of the U.S. National Championship team. More than likely will represent the U.S. at the Olympics next year. This is actually a, the compulsory floor routine, and, and at the 94 Team Worlds in November, she was the compulsory floor exercise champion, so she does this pretty well. Better than anyone on the planet. <laughs> That's exactly right. She's very strong in compulsories overall, which is very important because they are weighted 60%, where optionals are weighted 40% for your total all-around score. The interesting thing to note is that after the 96 Olympic Games, there will be no compulsories. It's coming out of the program, so this is the last time to enjoy something like this. That's exactly right. Compulsories are a mandatory routine that elite gymnasts must perform at qualifying meets and international meets in order to be ranked. Amanda voted homecoming queen of her school this year. She also signed a letter of intent to int attend the University of Georgia, but she's going to put it on hold for a little while while she trains for the 96 Olympics. Talking about training, she came down to Atlanta with the Cincinnati team to keep up her training with her coach, but chose not to compete in the uh, competition here. That's right. She's saving herself for a lot of the big international meets that are coming up, and I think it's a wise decision. She's 17 years old, and she wants to save her body as much as she can. This is the last time I pass in the compulsory routine. And there's that radiant smile that she's become so famous for. Amanda Borden, if her personality was shared across the whole U.S. team, U.S. squad and the gymnastics program would surely blossom. <laughs> 